Hello my fellow Hime! Welcome back to another planty video! Thank you so much for being here, I really appreciate it! Today's topic is going to be part 2 of plant mistakes that I have made so that you don't have to. If you enjoy content including plants, challenges, and games, please like this video, comment down below, and consider subscribing. It would help me out so much. I know, your girl cut her hair. It's so much shorter now and I feel so much lighter. It's a really great feeling. I do miss my long hair just a little bit. The hairstyles I was able to do with long hair were definitely different. Now I'm just looking into lots of cute hairpins. I'm just happy that my head feels lighter now to be honest. I don't know if you guys can relate, but when I had long hair, my hair would like twist around when I was sleeping and it kind of like wrapped around my neck or it would get stuck under my back. So that would be really annoying and I would have to like pull my hair out from underneath me. It was kind of a hassle to be honest, so I don't miss that part of having long hair for sure. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just get into it. So the first topic is going to be plant maintenance or shall I say plant neglect. Oops. I wanted to talk a little bit about hydro spikes because I have been using them for a couple of months now. Basically I stopped using hydro spikes so the way I use them is I would soak the hydro spike in a cup of water for about 15 minutes and then I would make sure the hydro spike was filled with water and I would push the spike down into my plant soil so that the spike is completely submerged into the soil. It was really great for a couple months. It was nice not having to water my peace lily and my tenanthi for that time period. But over time, I found that the hydro spikes would dry out quicker. The water from the hydro spike wasn't dripping slowly into the soil as it should. When I would check the hydro spike every couple of weeks, I saw that that plant's soil was completely dry even though there was still water in the cup and sometimes there was still even water in the hydro spike. To maintain a hydro spike, you need to make sure that there is water in the hydro spike. So you do need to clean it sometimes. Over time, algae can build up on the tube and I think the algae blocked the tube from doing its job and making sure that water gets into the hydro spike in order to water the plants. I would find myself still having to water my peace lily and my prayer plant and I found maybe it wasn't worth it anymore and I felt like a hydro spike was kind of an excuse to neglect my plants. I'll be real with you, I did not wipe the leaves off of my peace lilies and my prayer plants because the hydro spike would just water my plants for me and I wouldn't check on it as much. My peace lily is actually right next to me now. I do water this guy manually now and it's been doing just fine. I don't have to water it as much now since it's winter and I don't have a heater running where this plant lives. So I'm still keeping my plants alive even without hydro spikes. Another thing about plant maintenance is of course watering your plants, making sure that they have some H2O for their roots to soak up. My issue with watering sometimes is watering plants from the top. Over time, my plant's getting waterlogged. I still top water a lot, but we really have to keep in mind that soil may get compacted over time and we need to maintain soil aeration, whether we stick a chopstick in and mix the soil up or pouring a hydrogen peroxide mix into the soil to aerate it. And I know a lot of people also bottom water to prevent water logging or soil compaction. Another part of this plant maintenance is repotting. I would of course have a bigger pot for the plant to be able to grow into. I would put down a little mesh to cover the hole at the bottom, but you don't really need to, to be honest. But maybe it does help catch some of the soil at the bottom. I would put a little bit of soil down at the bottom of the pot. Then I would put the plant in, of course with all the roots and like some of the soil and whatnot. 
then my mistake would be to fill the pot to the brim with soil and I didn't leave any space for water spillage. I didn't leave a gap on the top between the soil and the top of the pot. And the problem with that is when you water your plants from the top, it takes time for the water to soak into the soil and when you put a little too much water it will spill over the side of the pot it's funny because i even watched a video telling me not to fill my pot to the brim with soil but i still did it because i was afraid that my plant wasn't going to get enough light if it was lower down the pot but trust me you guys it will save you so much spillage in the future if you just leave a gap between the top of the soil and the top of the pot. So the second topic is going to be about prop boxes. As I mentioned in a previous video, I did keep some prop boxes outdoors. It was not really a good idea. I did have a few successful prop boxes outside that I completely forgot about. They're doing totally fine and have huge roots, but the problem with having prop boxes outside is that you can't control the sunlight as much. And depending on the season, the sun may be too bright, especially for house plants and indoor plants that don't love direct sunlight. Another mistake that I made was not keeping my prop boxes humid enough. Especially when they were outside, I could not keep up with watering the moss that was in my prop boxes. And in some of the boxes, I forgot to put a cup of water inside it to help maintain the humidity inside. So it wasn't even getting the benefits of humidity and then the leaves were getting burned and all of that. I also have had issues with my prop boxes being too humid and they started getting mold like the kind of mold that's like fuzzy and white and that was not good either I had to take the lids off and make sure they were getting enough ventilation so it can go either way your plants can get too dry, too much sun or they can get too much moisture and too much humidity and I've actually had a problem with there being too much water at the bottom of the prop box but this wasn't my mistake. I had my dad take care of my prop boxes at some point for a couple of weeks, but he overwatered it and there was way too much moisture in there. Luckily, I came back in time to replace the moss that was in there. I kept all of those plants alive. Thank goodness. <laughs> That's the hard part about letting other people take care of your plants for you. You don't know if they're going to overwater your plants or neglect them. Yeah, you just don't know what's gonna happen with your plant babies. But that's something I guess you have to risk if you are traveling or you are gone and you can't be home for some reason. Just make sure you give them detailed instructions on how to take care of them, maybe demo it for them, maybe have them practice with your plants once or twice. That might help them get a better feel for when to water a plant and all that good stuff. I'm definitely still experimenting with different prop boxes. I'm trying out perlite, I have tried pumice and cocoa choir and cocoa chips. And yeah, definitely still experimenting with them. Currently, most of my prop boxes have moss in them, but who knows, that might change. But yeah, I'm definitely having fun with prop boxes and I recommend you trying to make your own. The next topic I want to discuss are succulents. You guys, succulents are not the easiest to take care of. They definitely are not the easiest to propagate. I have tried to propagate them by laying them out on a tray of soil and misting them every day and I tried to do it for I think it was almost 30 days. They were just deteriorating over time. I took that really hard because I sprayed them every single day for almost a month and I didn't really know what I was doing wrong. I kept them outside but away from the sun. It was warm outside. I believe it was summer but it just did not work. <laughs> 
I felt like I kind of did everything as instructed, but it just did not work out for me. If you guys have any tips on how to propagate succulents, I would love to know. And especially at the beginning, I did not know how to care for a succulent. When I got my first few succulents in 2019, I believe, I put them outside in my mom's garden, but I put them in an area where they were not getting enough sunlight. It was raining one time. They just got so soaking wet. And for some reason, I had them on a saucer outside. The rain water would just get stuck in the saucer. A saucer isn't really necessary for outdoor plants because you can just let the water drain down into the cement. That was not the best move, putting a saucer underneath the succulent. But the plants ended up being okay. They survived. I moved them to a sunnier spot. They are actually in my succulent arrangements now. For a couple of my succulents, I actually was using the wrong type of soil as well. I don't know why, but I used just regular potting soil with a lot of amendments, which I thought would be okay because it's airy and it's chunky. One example being the Senecio Macroglossus variegata. I put that in regular potting soil with lots of pumice but it was not happy and the edges started browning and once I put it into cactus and succulent soil with some cocoa choir and cocoa chips it was so much happier and you may have seen in my favorite houseplants video that the Senecio macroglossus variegata is actually in that one and it was vining up the trellis and it was so beautiful at that point the plant was in cactus and succulent soil and I'm so happy that I moved it into cactus and succulent soil. Try to know your plants when you buy them. Know whether they need cactus and succulent soil or regular potting soil or some other completely different medium. Knowing your plant's preferred medium is really important to help your plant thrive in your home. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next Friday. Bye!